To zero the uh, servo amplifier, we turn this knob until the current through the servo motor is minimized. It's a zero set knob. Now after sitting for several months, there's an oxide layer built up, so we just turn it back and forth rapidly. We can scrape off some of that oxide layer, and then we watch the needle and make it dip as low as possible. That's pretty good right there. Now, uh, at the lowest level, the uh, motor should be stopped. No matter what, the motor should be stopped. Next, we zero the operational amplifier. That's this guy with the zero set knob. The signal we're looking for is here. We want that to be zero by turning that knob, provided that there's no signal going into that op amp. Now, to make that happen, there cannot be any feedback here, and this switch must be in the off position. Now, the it's very sensitive, so Again, you might want to scrape off the oxide layer on this potentiometer as well. And then uh, we look at the voltmeter and drive it as close to zero as possible. That's pretty good. That's good enough. So the op amp zero set knob has been adjusted for this lab. There's no need to turn that one anymore. If you accidentally turn it, when you really meant to turn this one for example, then you have to go through the zero adjust operation all over again. I forgot, did I mention that this signal shows up at the error output uh, four millimeter jack? I have the voltmeter connected with respect to ground to the error signal, which is that signal there. Do not insert voltmeter probes into those two millimeter jacks, those two millimeter uh, uh, sockets. Now adjust the manual step to about five volts. Um, Let's scrape off the oxide layer off of this potentiometer as well. We'll set this to zero for now, P2, and scrape back and forth a whole bunch of times. Scrape off some, any oxide layer, and fully counterclockwise turns it as low as possible. Flip the switch up. That will apply a positive voltage at this point. Now then, turn the knob until we see about 5 volts over there. Not, uh, that's not, not too critical. The important thing is when I flip the switch up, I should see approximately that voltage. If the oxide layer is scraped off of all of this, then it should be repeatable. See, that's pretty good. Now the motor isn't turning because P2 is set to zero. If I set P2 to one, for example, that's a gain of 0.1. So the motor, the, the signal driving the motor is a tenth of five volts, or a half of a volt is creating that speed. I forgot to mention a minute ago that um, when we apply a positive 5 volts here, negative 5 volt shows up there because the operational amplifier inverts the signal. If we see negative 5 here, that means we're applying positive there. If I flip the switch down, that will apply a negative 5 volts at this point, but positive 5 volts will show up there because the op amp uh, inverts the signal 
that's input to the op amp. Now I'll demonstrate P2. We will actually measure the voltage at point P uh, with this voltmeter and we'll measure the voltage at the step input with this voltmeter. Um, it's approximately 5. I can make it a little closer to 5. It's hard. Uh, I'll tweak it in a second. Right now P2 is set to 0. If I turn this exactly one revolution until 0 shows up again and a 1 shows up in the upper box, that means the potentiometer is set to 0.1. So the voltage here should be a tenth of the voltage there. And you see that it is. If I turn this one more revolution so that a 2 shows up, it means that the potentiometer is uh, applying a gain of 0.2. Or 0.2 times 5 is uh, about 1. And we'll do 0.3. One more revolution until 3 shows up in the box above. Uh, 0.3 times 5 is 1.5. So that shows the function of P2. The next set of measurements will determine Km, the uh, motor gain, that's one of the parameters in the motor transfer function. To do that, we'll measure the tachometer voltage here. Tachometer voltage here. We'll measure the step voltage here and also the value of P2. So if I set P2 to 0.1, I record the motor speed in volts, 3.2 volts, and the step input, uh, uh, 4.95 volts, and uh, the gain P2 of 0.1. That's one data set. Next, turn this to point 0.2 and record those values as well. Point 0.2, 6.4 volts is the tachometer speed and negative 4.95 is the step input voltage. And finally, one more. Point 0.3, 9.6 volts is the motor speed in volts and negative 4.95 is the step input voltage. That's as hot, that's as fast as we need to go, but I'm sure you might be interested how fast will it go. That's a gain of 0.4. Point five, point six. There's no need for it to go that fast because we're never going to be operating at that fast. So P2, point one, point two, point three. That's good enough. Uh, average those values to get um, one value of Km, the motor, the motor gain. Now collect a step response that looks something like that. I'll show you how in the next segment of the video. Press the cursor button. Select voltage cursor. Position the first cursor on the zero position. Position the next cursor at the steady state value, which is uh, 3.16. Write that down. 
Now with a calculator, multiply that by 1 minus e to the minus 1, that's 0.632, multiply that by 3.16, and that value is 1.997. Now position the top cursor to 1.997. 1.997 or as close as possible. Looks like 2.0 is as close as possible. The time between the start of this step response and that point is the time constant. That's what we're after. So we, in order to measure that time, we need to move the entire trace, let's say to the right, to the third grid line. One, two, three. If I move the entire trace to the right, to the third grid line, now change the cursor to time, position the first cursor to the start of the step, which is about right there. Now move the second cursor to the third grid line. and read the time between those two cursors. It's uh, 0.27 seconds. That's the time constant. That's the motor, servo motor time constant that we're trying to measure. Now I'll show you how to collect that step response. You'll be starting from uh, warm up and probably pressing auto set is a good way to begin. Um, channel 1, we want to measure the signal coming in channel 1. We want DC, we want bandwidth limit turned on, we want a times 1 probe because we're using this probe. And then we want to set the time per division to a very, very slow value, like about half a second per division. With P2 set to 0.1 and the manual step set to 5 volts, about we see the signal went off screen. So I change this to a larger value. How about 1 volt? So the signal will go from that's 0 up to a couple of volts. I'd actually like to have the zero position down here, and then have the steady state value go close to the top. So I'll increase that one more. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I've set the range. Now then, probably a little faster sweep. That looks pretty good. If it sweeps too fast, then it doesn't reach steady state in the screen available range. So I think the last one was pretty good. Now I want it to sweep once and stop. To do that, I set the trigger menu. I set the trigger menu to channel 1, rising uh, normal is better. When I press normal, I see these two arrows. This arrow sets the voltage trigger level, which is adjusted here. I want that slightly above zero. And this shows the time trigger position, which I set here. So the trigger level has been set. I press single sequence. It's armed, it's ready, it's waiting for the signal to reach that level and then it'll start sweeping from that position.
apply the step. There it collected the signal I'm interested in. I can turn this off and that signal will stay there while I use my cursor to measure uh, the uh, time constant. The next steps are explained in the next video along with how to use the flashcard to capture an image of the screen for inclusion in the lab report.